Okay, so they're telling us that the PV and VQ are tangents. So we must just remember that. I will quickly um, highlight that for you guys. Okay, so PV and VQ are tangents. Um, chord T is produced such that that is parallel to that. Okay, so the lines are parallel, but they've already showed us that on the diagram. They intersect at W and then P1. Okay, so everything that they've told us is already on the diagram. So the first question says, um, prove that, prove that S, angle S is equal to X for four marks. Okay, so let's have a look. If we look at this tangent over here. Let's actually make that a little bit bigger so you guys can clearly see what I'm talking about. So if we look at this tangent, okay, then I want you to, whenever you see a tangent, many, many, many times, there's gonna be something to do with the tan chord theorem. Okay, then I want you to look at this uh, chord over here. Oh, the chord stops there. Then I want you to find the angle that is in between the tangent and the chord. In between the tangent and the chord. That would be this one here. Let me do that in a different color. Now, I know some of you don't like the tan chord theorem, but that's just because maybe you haven't been taught the tan chord theorem nicely or you just haven't practiced it enough. But when you have a tangent, which is the green line, and you have a, a chord, which is the red line, then I want you to take, your two, take two of your fingers and put one of them on either side of the chord. So you would put one of your fingers over here, and you would put your other finger over here. So you'd literally put your fingers like that. And then what you must try to do is you must try to make those two black circles come together at a specific point on the edge of the circle. So you must try to make them come together. So what do I mean by that? I mean that you can slide this finger along this line over here, and then you can slide, and you have to slide your finger along a line. So then this one can go along here, and it's going to come together over there. So your fingers are going to come together, and they are going to be able to make this angle over here. And so the tan chord theorem tells us that um, P1, I think that was a P, let me just quickly erase that. P1 must be the same as Q1, and that is where we'll start. So we can say that P1 is the same as Q1, and that is because of the tan chord theorem, okay? Okay, so we're gonna say that so long. Then if we know that those two angles are now the same, then what I want you to do is I want you to look carefully um, so we can say that we can say that P1 is going to be equal to, I mean, Q1 is going to be equal to X. We can put a little X over there. Now have a look at the parallel lines over here. So there's a parallel line here. And they've told us that this line is also parallel to it over there. So if I show you this here, we can see that there is a corresponding angles. Okay. There's corresponding angles over here and over here. And so therefore, we can say that angle S is equal to angle Q1. And that is because of corresponding angles due to the fact that QR is parallel to SV. OK, and so we can say, therefore, S is equal to X. Okay, perfect guys. So that's our first question for this one. Prove that PQTV, PQTV, let's go draw that out so we can see what they're talking about here. Um, PQTV, okay, so it's PQ mm -hmm, TV over oh, there, okay.
Okay, so we want to prove that that is a cyclic quadrilateral. Now, there are three ways that you can prove something is a cyclic quadrilateral. Let me quickly show you. All right, method one. Method two. And method three. Right, so in method one, um, let me just change my pen size. Okay, so in method one, it typically looks something like this. Method two, it looks the same. And then method three looks more like this. Okay, so <clears throat> in method one, we can prove that the opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. So for method one, we can, um, we can say that the opposite angles equal 180. If you can do that, then it is already a cyclic quadrilateral. That is one of the ways that you can do it. The second way that you can do it is if you look at the exterior angle, if you look at the exterior angle, if that exterior angle is the same as the opposite interior angle, then it is also a cyclic quadrilateral. So exterior angle equals interior opposite angle. Okay. Then the third method, and this is actually one of the more popular ones that I see, and I think we're even going to have that one in today's question. And that is when you can prove that these two angles are the same. Or you can maybe prove that these two angles are the same. You know, like when you have a circle, you have a circle um, like this. And then you have some type of you have some type of shape that does something like that. And then we all know that we all know that these two angles are the same and these angles are the same. That's like angles in the same segment. Yes, that's what we're doing over here. So if you can prove that for this one, then it's also a cyclic quad. So we can say angles in the same segment to call it the bow tie method. Um, some people like to call it the butterfly, but yeah, the bow tie is the best name for it because um, yeah, you can see there's like a bow tie. You know, the thing that some people wear when they go to like a matric dance or something like that, there's a bow tie, then it's that type of shape. So what I always tell students to do is the following, okay? I tell them to look at the cyclic quadrilateral that they are asking us to talk about or to prove, and that's this one over here. And then I ask them to see, are there any lines going across the middle? Can you see if there are any lines going across the middle? Yes, there are. There's this line going across, and there's this line going across. So because there are lines going across, it's normally going to be this one over here. Not every time, but usually it's like that, okay? If there are not any lines going across, then it's usually this one or this one, okay? So what we need to go and do is we need to try see, I'm going to start off by trying to see if method number three will work. So try to find angles in the same segment and see if you can see if you can get that. Q2 Q2 is equal to P2 because of the tan chord theorem, okay? So I hope that you guys can see that uh, Q2 is the same as P2. So I'll start there. So Q2 is the same as P2 because of tan chord theorem. Okay, so I hope that you see that one. Then we can say, if you look carefully at, um, if you look carefully at this line here and this line here, we know that they are parallel. So what we, what some students then did was they said that, um, I'm just trying to choose a nice color for you guys. They said that this angle, angle Q2, must be the same as angle V2 because of the alternating angles. Can you see that? There, there, and there. There's an alternating angle over there. So we can then say that angle Q2 
is the same as angle V2, and that's because of alternating angles. And that's because of um, RQ being parallel to VTS. So then what we can say is that therefore angle P2 must be the same as V2. Can you guys see it? If Q2 is the same as P2 and Q2 is also the same as V2, then it means that P2 and V2 are the same. Now, what that means, now that is a good thing because if I, if I quickly show you a bow tie, can you see there's like almost a bow tie over there? Sorry, without that line over there, there's the bow tie. And what we have just said now is that P2 and V2 are the same. So bam and bam, they are the same. And so because we can show that those two parts are the same as each other, it means that this shape is a cyclic quadrilateral. Um, so the way that you would end this off is you would say, therefore, um, what is this thing called? PQTV is cyclic and your reason is converse angles in same segment. Okay, prove that TQ, so where's TQ? Let's go highlight TQ. There you are. Is a tangent to a circle that is passing through Q, W, and P. Q, W, and P. Ooh, okay, how are, the, how are we supposed to get a circle going through that? Q, W, and P. Hmm, yeah, it's always difficult drawing these circles. Okay, so we need to prove that this is a tangent. Now, mark my words. When they say this, it's usually gonna be converse, tan chord theorem. So if we wanna prove that that line is a tangent, we need to somehow prove the tan chord theorem. I'm gonna do it once more, just because the circle looks a little bit too big, so it's getting in the way. I can't really see what we're doing here. So let me, so what I want you to do is I want you to find the tangent. Now the tangent that we are looking for is already the one that's in blue. And then you need to find a chord. Now, the chord that we could probably use would be this one over, let's use that chord over there, okay? So you see how we have a tangent? Well, we, we don't know if it's a tangent, but we're trying to prove that it's a tangent. So the tangent will be TQ and the chord is WQ. Now, if we are using the tan chord theorem, then what we learned about earlier was that the angle, the angle that is between the tangent and the chord, which one is that? That is Q3. So it's that angle over there. We need to make sure that that angle is going to be the same as one of the angles in the circle. Now, remember, to find the angle in that circle, you put your finger on each side of the chord, so over there and over there, and you must try to make your fingers come, to, your, your two fingers come together. So, for example, some of you might make your fingers come together over here, but that's not correct because that's not on the edge of the circle that we are looking at. We are looking at the blue circle you rather go along this line and this line over here. And so they meet at P2. And so what this means is that if the tan chord theorem, if this is a tangent, then it means that P2 and Q3 should be the same. So if it is a tangent, then P2 should be the same as Q3. So we should try 
to prove this. Okay, so we must try to prove that Q3 is the same as P2. Now we know that P2 is already X. Okay, and I think what we also need to do is, okay, I'm gonna get rid of all of that now. I think let's quickly draw that tan, that, that, that cyclic quad that we had earlier. I've got a feeling that's coming into play here. So let's quickly draw that, that cyclic quad, which I think was this one, this one. Um, what was that cyclic quad? PQTV. So what we know is that that, that is a cyc that that big red shape, we already proved that that is a cyclic quadrilateral. And so remember that there is a there is a bow tie. If I show you the bow tie again, um, there. Can you see the bow tie? Well, the bow tie would show us that this angle, P1 and Q3 are the same. So we can go write that down so long. P1 is the same as Q3, and that is just because of angles in the same segment, because we know that that is a cyclic quad. So we can say this, angles in same segment. Great. We also know that P1 is the same as, um, oh no, we don't even have to say that because now we know that that's X. So we can say therefore um, Q3 is equal to X. And so now can you see that Q3, Q3 is the same as P2. Q3 is the same as P2 because they're both equal to X. So we can say therefore Q3 is equal to P2. And that's what we tried to prove because now we can say therefore TQ is a tangent. And this will be because of converse tan chord theorem.